So suppose you're a lab rat sniffing around the lab one morning at, and you're looking at this signal and you think, you know, this looks pretty good to me. And for some silly reason, you decide to raise the trigger level. Notice the trigger level now is set about in the middle. You raise the trigger level up a ways and you get to about here and you may or may not be able to see it but there's a very very small trace that, that shows up over there now and then. You think, gee, I'm not, I don't know what that is. Maybe there's something funny about this signal. When I trigger down here it seems to work okay. When I trigger up there if I go up high enough, I get this little anomaly over there. Maybe I ought to look at this a little more. So you slow down the time base and you see that there's, there is an occasional, but this may just be data. It, it, there may not be anything wrong with this signal after all. Maybe it's just that when I go up to the top here, the uh, the, the trigger, maybe maybe the oscilloscope isn't working quite right or something, but uh, but maybe, wait a minute, I remember watching a video that said when you have uh, intermittent signals that sometimes you can get them to appear a little better if you go to the display menu and you turn on the persistence. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to, I'm going to let, I'll take five seconds of persistence. And now you're sitting there watching the, uh, the display. Now, here is where a person needs a little bit of patience. Because we're, we're now going to wait. We're watching the screen, sipping our cup of coffee, and thinking, ah, maybe this is a waste of time. Why in the world am I doing this? Well, because you're an engineer and you haven't got anything else better to do. Or maybe a better reason is you're a lab rat and you're more curious than most other people. Well, it's taken a long time. It doesn't seem to have, to have done anything. So let me pause the video so you won't have to wait as long as I will. And then all of a sudden, this happens. And you say, gee, that's interesting, and, and now this. And by the way, I didn't stage this. These are just happening. Happened again. Went a long time before it happened, and then it happened several times in a row. Well, this is the nature of looking for signals in, uh, for anomalies in signals on systems like embedded systems. You, sometimes you wait for a long time and sometimes the anomaly appears right away. So you're thinking, well, gee, you know, this is, it's good that I see this because I know I need to look more at this signal, but gosh, there has to be a better way. I mean, isn't there some way that I can let the scope do the watching for me? And the answer is yes. One of those ways is called pass-fail. So let's set that up and I'll show you what we're, what we're going to be doing. So I'm going to go down here in the menu and I'm going to click on the menu and up here it says pass-fail. Then up here in enable, I'm going to enable the pass-fail. And notice that it says the source, channel 1. It says operate. We're not operating yet. Uh, it has mask. Well, let's click on mask. And let's do a create mask. And we can use cursors if we want to, but I'm just going to use the automatic creation. Create. And notice what happened. It created a mask that looks like that. Now I'm going to go into display 
and I'm going to turn the persistence time back to minimum. We'll go back to pass fail, mask, and notice that now we can create a mask. So we're going to do that. And then we're going to go back to pass fail and we're going to click on operate. Then we're going to click down here where it says information. Now you'll notice that right here it's, it has done about 2 million waveforms and it has detected 21 that don't meet the criteria. In other words, that don't stay within the mask. Well, you're saying, okay, this is starting to look better. At least I'm getting the scope to do some of my work for me. Now it's up to 35 failing waveforms out of a little over two and a half or 2.8 million. Imagine if you were trying to do this with single sweep, where you, you, you'd have to push the single sweep button 2.8 million times to see this anomaly 35 times, or roughly about two or three uh, out of a million waveforms has this anomaly, and it's very random. There, there is no connection between the two. So uh, let me uh, show you the, the board that I'm using at this time. And by the way, I deliberately changed boards because one of the things that uh, you need to be aware of is with these uh, demonstration boards, you know what the anomaly is. They tell you in the instructions what it is. But just like the, the, the <laughs> morning, early morning lab rat, in real life, you don't know what the anomaly is. And the more infrequently it occurs, the, the worse it can be, uh, especially if you don't have a clue, because you could waste days staring at a scope and there may be nothing wrong with the signal or there may be something wrong with the signal but it happens so infrequently that you run out of patience and don't find it. And the nice thing about something like this pass-fail analysis is you may notice it's still running. Uh, what do we got? 123 waveform failures out of 5 million. The uh, when I first uh, set this experiment up uh, half an hour before I started uh, running the video, it took almost five minutes just to get the first waveform failure. It had collected over 10 million samples before it found the first, uh, in other words, it was collecting uh, for what seemed like ages before I even saw the first one. Now we're seeing them fairly often. So let's go down here and click on reset and see how long it takes us before we see the first failure. Now we had uh, eight of them. Let's reset again. One, two, three, and now a long time, now a fourth, a fifth, and some time. Okay, well I said I'd show you the board, so let me uh, take a look at that. This is the board that's generating that uh, signal with random failures. Uh, it's, it's made by uh, Agilent, uh, which of course now is called Keysight, but this was a this is an N2918 uh, demonstration board that actually I think was produced by Agilent uh, more than 10 years ago, maybe maybe longer ago than that. I think it was produced originally for their 3000 or 4000 series of scopes, which are 
uh, 8, 10, maybe 12 years old at this point. At any rate, uh, unfortunately, these demo boards seem to be disappearing. Fortunately, I have a small collection of uh, four or five of them that I've picked up over the years. But when I say unfortunately, uh, a lot of times now the scope manufacturers are including, like Agilent and Tektronics, are including anomalous signals in their, uh, in their oscilloscope that you can uh, uh, attached to and, and set up, uh, learn how to set up the scope. The problem with that is that if you already know what you're looking for, about half of what you need to learn, you're just being given as a crib. Because the real problem in engineering is not knowing if there's a problem, and even if you suspect there is a problem, not knowing exactly what it is, if you know what to look for and you know there's a problem, you're three-fourths of the way to the answer. So one of the things that I'm trying to demonstrate here is that you need to get experience. And experience means first you have to learn what the tools are that might be available to you. Then you have to learn what might go wrong, or more appropriately, how you can look to see if there are any clues to follow. So think of yourself like Sherlock Holmes. But the trouble is you don't even know if a crime has been committed, much less who did it and how. And your job as the uh, signal detective is first to figure out if there's anything going on that's wrong and then to figure out how am I going to follow the clues to, to find out what's causing this to happen. So I'm going to deliberately make this a little bit shorter video than I normally would because uh, I'm going to be doing a few more in this same area and quite frankly if I put them all together not only will they make too long a video but they'll also uh, people may get confused about one or the other so they may want to watch one and may not want to watch the other but the trouble is what they want to watch is later in the the first video so I'm going to separate this into pass fail and then we'll look at some other uh, techniques tools if you will for finding out if your suspicions about a crime being committed in this network or not are true. So, let me wish you some good sleuthing. Get in the lab, play with real signals, find out how to use your oscilloscope, and you'll find that it pays dividends down the road. Your designs will actually work when they get into production. Instead of producing a million of them and then discovering that, oh, there's this glitch that, like a system I worked on many years ago, only shows up on Friday night at 7 p.m. or approximately 7 p.m. on Friday night. And why did it only show up on Friday night? Because it was being used in a large pharmacy chain that its heaviest load, was Friday night. Everybody heading home from work would stop by the pharmacy and to get their prescriptions for the weekend and all of a sudden the system was loaded in a way it never was loaded during the rest of the week. Those are the kinds of random failures that if you don't find them in the lab you find them in the field and they cost a heck of a lot more to find out there. So Hope you've enjoyed this video, learned a little bit from it. Once again, as I always do, I encourage you, please stay safe. But I also wish you a nice day.